Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to Let's Play Dot Hack GU Volume 2. This is your host. <laughs> host, as if it's some kind of game show or something. This is some type of artist. Uh, I think these are the items we just got from transferring over. You'll get more like them, it's not a huge deal. But hey, about ability slot costs, I guess this is a good time to mention one of the new features of Volume 2 that makes Volume 1 seem so inferior in comparison. Not this feature in particular, but there are going to be a lot of features in Volume 2 that weren't present in Volume 1 that uh, I sure missed when I replayed Volume 1 just now. So, um, now that your level is a little bit higher, you'll start getting a, um, armor and weapons that have more than one slot available for customizable abilities. Um, and some of these abilities will actually require two slots, so now there's a bit of... I don't know if you'd want to call it strategy, but there's more to think about when you're choosing what to customize your equipment with. Because it's like, do you want to go for two abilities, or do you want to go for a potentially better ability that costs the um, price of two? Um, I really feel like the abilities that cost two usually are much better than the ones that cost one, but for right now where we're at in this game, it might be a little bit uh, more of a choice that you'd be thinking about. Because as you might remember from the first one, I was a really big fan of adding like poison to my attacks and sleep and stuff like that. So I may not want to uh, waste ability slots just yet, but we'll see. So, as, uh, as we found out last time, we are stuck in a video game, in this game that's about a video game. So we're gonna walk around town and talk to people and see, you know, what, what they have to say about it, I guess. Um, this section of the game is really just kind of meant to re-familiarize uh, re yourself with the root town, uh, Mac Anu. Which is a little weird, because Mac Anu becomes a pretty obsolete all things considered, um, you do return to it for some story and gameplay things throughout the rest of the series, um, but this isn't going to be your main server you'll be playing on anymore. Uh, you'll you'll get a new, well, we're going to get access to a new town pretty soon, and uh, I actually really like the town a lot. It's I definitely have the most memories with it, and I guess I'll talk about it a little bit more when. Uh, oh yeah, this is. I, I was... <sighs> well, one of my big problems with GU is how all of the NPCs, like, look exactly the same, except for, like, a color uh, palette swap. And and you could make the same argument for the original series. I, I won't, like, deny it, but... You know, I, I really feel like GU, with its added level of detail, makes it, like, a lot more apparent. And it feels like just a palette swap. Like, you, you can at the very least see some minor differences in, like, either, like, the face or the clothes, um, in the first series. Here, though, it's just, like, those two guys are, like, twins, and, yeah, I don't know. Not, not a big fan of the NPCs in this game. I feel like they're very, very boring and generic looking, and, yeah, whatever. What was I talking about? I, I don't remember. I have a horrible time focusing lately. <laughs> Um, oh man, I, I really can't remember. Alright, so let's talk about something else. Look, more people that look exactly alike. Isn't that fun? Oh. This is the medic squad. You'll find these guys throughout the dungeons as you play through the game, and they'll give you free heals and status buffs and stuff like that. Oh, I think we were talking about, uh, Rutans. So, I, I think one of the reasons, and, and this is definitely a personal reason for me, I, I think one of the reasons why Volume 2 is my favorite volume is because I have, like, the most positive memories about that. Uh, volume 1 came out during my very first semester of college, and it was not a good, welcoming first semester for me. Uh, I really didn't have a lot of time to play games during that first semester. You know, obviously, you know, when it came to Dot Hack, you know, I I made the time for Dot Hack, but uh 
truth be told, a lot of that playthrough might have been during the winter break. Because this game came out at the end of October, I remember. So, uh, I, I don't know. Volume 2 came out, I, I believe, in, in May of, you know, the next season. 2007, that would have been. So... That was when summer break started, and I had, like, no school to, like, worry about at all. It was just, I had all the time in the world to just focus on this. And after that first year, which was pretty rough for college to getting used to it, I welcomed, you know, the chance to, you know, sit down and really, like, dive into a video game. Volume 3 came out in September of uh, 2007, I think. And, you know, I'm back at school again, but that was, it was an easier semester, so I could, uh, I, I had more time to actually focus on a video game. Um, but I think just because that first summer of college was just, like, really fun for me, I didn't really do anything in particular. You know, I hung out with my, uh, my one friend a lot, and it was just nice being, like, I don't know, free, more or less. I think that was the first year we really started, like, you know, visiting more, like, places outside of our town, because we're driving now, and, you know, I, we, when uh, I first started driving, you know, I, I didn't really like driving at all. I still really hate driving, to be honest, but during high school, I, re I didn't really drive anywhere except for my job, and after... You know, driving to college, you know, that took a lot of time. I didn't really enjoy that, but I don't know. That that summer, we uh, we kind of, like, explored a little more, and it was fun. So there's good memories for me attached to GU Volume 2, in addition to all of the, uh, the fun stuff that happens. You know, and it's weird because I think in trilogies, the middle part is always the weakest. Because, you know, the first part introduces everything, and it's new, and it feels exciting, and then the third part, like, you know, wraps everything up and gives you, hopefully, all the answers you were looking for. The middle one just kind of seems like this awkward, like, mess where there's, like, no proper introduction or proper ending. It just literally feels like the middle of something. But since I do enjoy a lot of the stuff that happens in Volume 2 so much... It's it's nice that there's, like, a middle part to a trilogy that I'm a uh, big fan of. Um, and I, I can't wait for these things to start happening, because I, I feel like I've just gone on and on enough with the gameplay in the first volume, and it's like... There's a lot of story stuff happening that I want to talk about, both to praise and complain about. <laughs> We'll get to, um, we'll get to the new town and everything like that pretty soon. They don't really, like, make you stay in Macanu for too long. After this, they'll throw you into, like, not like a tutorial area, but, you know, an easy area to ease you into things. Then there'll be more story stuff that happens, and we'll, we'll get all there. The, the first few parts of this aren't gonna be, you know, terribly exciting. Part four has one of my favorite scenes in the game in it, so you can look forward to that. Um, man, these... Some of these beast characters just always look so weird, and it's... it's I hate how, like, so many of them are, like, hunched over, too. They always seem, like, so sickly. It's weird. Yeah, I, I don't really, like, talk with a whole lot of the NPCs, so I usually skip through a lot of their text. Um, there is, there are some interesting stories to be had within the text itself, but, I don't know, just, just there's something about, like, the piece, NPCs and GU that just, like, I, I don't want to, and I went into this in the first volume, but I'll repeat myself here, equipment in this game is not nearly as big of a deal as it was in the first game, so your incentive to trading with other players is not very high. You know, I'm looking at it here just because, you know, I did stop to talk with them, and, you know, may as well take a look at what they got, but honestly, you'll probably just find all of the equipment you'll ever need, like, while traveling in areas. 
You know, it, it hurts that there's like a level cap or a level requirement to wear pieces of equipment because, um... Oh, yeah. So this drew me crazy because, like, the cursor is, like, pointing that we should go here right now. Even And I thought I, like, talked to everybody. And I was traveling around town for, like, ten minutes before, you know, I thought to maybe go my own at home and see if maybe Syllabus and Gaspard were there. And, like, sure enough, Gaspard's just, like, there, randomly. Just magically appears like that. It's It, it really bothered me that your the cursor was, like, there. Gaspard could have been at a shop, you know, where he always is, <laughs> but whatever. Um, but that level requirement for the equipment was just kind of... I, I don't know. It's like there's no point in, like, trading equipment that that's, like, a lot better for you because, like, you just can't wear it until you get to a certain level anyway. So if you're fine enough with your equipment now, there's, like, no point to, like, trading with other people to get better equipment. But now there's something going on in the town square. This also annoyed me too because Yada sent a short mail. And short mails are, are something in Dot Hack that really annoy me because it's like one of the bigger. Uh, hold, hold that thought. Let's watch people freak out for a second. Some kind of event or someone's bad joke? Can you tell me what's happening? You're some kind of admin guy, right? Please calm down. We are working hard to. How do you expect us to calm down? What are you going to do about this? I'm terribly sorry. Please, just try to be patient for a while. So, that guy in the blue suit is an admin. It looks like even CC Corp doesn't have a very good handle on the situation. My favorite part about the admin is that he kind of looks like the guards yeah, from Soliana in Sonic 06. But yeah, short mails are like... Short mails are something that, like, exist within story purposes of the world, but they don't exist as a gameplay mechanic, and it kind of really irritates me, because one of the more repetitive things about Dot .hack in general is having to log out and check your email after logging in just to have, like, one thing activate, hey, and it's like... You. I guess short mail is more like akin to like text messages within the game, but it, whenever it happens, it, it always makes me wish I had the option to check my mail within the game. So it seems that humans who lack morals both online and offline say the very same things after all. Jesus, Sakaki, what the hell? Where is that coming from? Well, it seems that you only act strong when facing those weaker than you. Pitiful. Does... do you if know him? Scared, run back to Kestrel with your tail between your legs. I guess the implication is that he's a PK that Sakaki knows, but... As reported, it, <laughs> it like still kind of looks like Sakaki came up starting a fight with somebody. Everyone, go support the town's order. We must not let them panic. Understood. It's weird that Sakaki is trying to make a handle on a situation and not so letting worried. them panic, considering things okay? in the future. But I'm sorry, Sakaki. We'll get there. We'll get there What's when wrong? we get there. I can't seem to hear you. You see, ever since you were killed by a bugged monster, you've been unable to speak. Yes. How'd you communicate to them if you couldn't hear? Are you sending oh no, short mails? I believe it. You're not one to tell a lie. Takaki. I'm sure you know this, but all players are currently unable to log out from the game. In fact, they have lost sight of their very selves. Everyone is kind of freaking it's out. As if their minds have been absorbed into the heart of the world itself. Or their souls, or whatever. <laughs> if only it was, That's Adelaide. Right. A game. But at the same time, it's also a reality all its own, Adelaide. At any rate, we must stop the players from panicking. You will help us, won't you? 
but Adelie can't speak. Ew, it's so creepy how he just said good girl. So Mr. Sakaki's the only one you can rely on after all, huh? <laughs> LOL. Love how they just capitalize LOL. It's so dumb. <laughs> so it's you, Terror of Death. Please stop calling a sayo that. <laughs> it appears there are only enemies to be found in your world. Adelie, why are you here? I thought I told you to stay at You the see, end. old Haseo in Volume 1 would have made some kind of whiny comeback against Sakaki. But now he just brushes it off. I I'm almost proud of him. Listen to me. This isn't something Moon Tree can do anything about. Ah, uh, and there he goes. Damn it, Haseo. I see. Are you saying that you can solve this situation? With a lot more certainty than you can. <laughs> What's so funny? Conceit. Don't you agree that it is the lust for power that is most certain to make fools out of people? Terror of death. What do you mean by that? I mean exactly what I said. Adelaide. I will see you later. Why did you say that? Huh? Why did you have to say things like that? Sakaki, Moon Tree, just wants to try and solve the situation. Ida isn't a problem that Moon Tree can solve. But even so, True, but I don't know. I don't it's not like Gyu's solving much either. I don't want to say anything because I'm pretty sure there's going to be more story coming up and I just don't want to interrupt myself because Yada or Pi has to say something. There's going to be a lot of story stuff in this episode. It's going to go on for a little bit longer than normal too. I see. The situation is much more serious than we thought. Let us summarize for a moment. Ever since the Ida phenomenon occurred while searching for Atalie, no one has been able to log out of the game. For the millionth time, yes. We've got Furthermore, that. None of the players have been <laughs> able to return to their real-world selves and their real lives. Goes without saying. And no new players have been able to log into the game. There is some useful information. Communications with the outside receive no reply. Some of the players have panicked to the point where they're starting to get violent. It seems that the system admins can't contain these players any longer. Yes, the system admins themselves are just as confused. Right now, their real selves are... At this point, we're no different than the lost ones. It is quite obvious that the reason for this abnormality is Ida. If we ever want to return to the real world again, it is imperative that we investigate Ida as quickly as possible. And one more thing. Let me tell you something important. Importance, you say? Something important. Because all of this wasn't? Now that her epitaph has been stolen, Adelie's PC data is starting to degenerate. <gasps> degenerate? What is he talking about? I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Why didn't you tell us? That's enough. Isn't it obvious? She didn't want us to worry about her. <laughs> Yada, 
In this world, our minds aren't residing in our bodies, but in our player characters, right? That is merely speculation. But in this case, it would seem to be the most likely explanation for what we are experiencing. So this is a world where our minds and characters are linked together. I thought they were in the first place. Like, isn't that what an Epitaph user was? Because they have, like, this bond with their PCs. I, I still don't really understand what they mean by that. What? You've got to be kidding me. What should we do? How can we cure her of this? Is your head just for decoration? <laughs> you should try thinking before you make a big fuss. Master Yada, do we know anything else? This too is only a guess. But it seems that this place is not really the world as we thought. It is a false world that Ida has created by copying the data off of CC Corp's servers. I believe that the world we are currently inside of is such a place. So it's a simulation inside of a simulation. That's one way to put it. Paddly, at one time you had the power to distinguish Ida's sound from all others. Come to think of it, didn't you say something like that when we found Indy Glut Lou? Uh, well, if you mean hearing strange sounds and seeing bug like things, I've had that happen a number of times. Have you heard that sound after being placed in your present condition? No, I haven't. I thought so. It all makes sense. It would seem that the data Ida stole from her is... You don't mean... the young girl's Morgana Factor? Oh boy. Morgana Factor? What's that? Master Yada. It's alright to tell him all about it now. The Morgana Factor is the specialized data that makes Epitaph users unique. Epitaph users are special characters created by CC Corp for use during certain projects. Thus, Epitaph user PCs have data inside them that is not found inside regular PCs. That's the Morgana Factor, usually called Epitaphs. So the reason that we can use avatars is because we have that Morgana Factor? I, I mean Epitaphs? That's right. I have a problem with this explanation that I'm hopefully going to remember to talk about once the scene is over. CC Corp wants to mass produce epitaph users. You mean as a defense against Ida? Yes, but thanks to strong protection protocols, we've been unable to adequately analyze them. We still don't know exactly what the Morgana factor is. Thanks to that, not only can't we mass produce, we can't even make a copy of it. So why not just bring the creator in on it? He should be able to take care of that without a problem. As I think as he's busy know, being dead. Factor was not I, I honestly don't remember person. what happened to Harold. I think well, it was kind of, of him in the first place. um what ambiguous. It from the dark abyss of this world. The abyss of this world? Each of the Morgana factors has its own name and identity. In my case. The name of my avatar is Tarvos, the epitaph of the Avenger. My avatar's name is Magus, the epitaph of the Propagation. As for Aseo, his avatar goes by the name of Scathe. He is the epitaph of the Terror of Death. The Terror of Death. The terror that flats through the night. It's an odd coincidence that it's the same as your PKK nickname. Yes, I'm sure it's a coincidence. Even with Magus's <laughs> the propagation, we can't repair the Morgana factor. Thus, now that she has lost her epitaph user abilities, Adelie can no longer hear Ida's sound. Maybe that's also part of the reason why Adelie lost her voice. Yada, 
What can we do to help her? There are no alternatives but to try to recover her Morgana factor from Ida. However... What? It will be difficult to trace Ida precisely, now that we are no longer on the actual CC Corp server. Fortunately for us, this Ida server is far from being perfect. This world contains seams in the structure. The fact that we can save our data is proof of that. That means... Yes. All we have to do is find them. Does that mean if we die in the Seems game and we just go back to the last save our point? Our only acceptable option is to infiltrate the Ida areas and conduct a thorough search. Infiltrate? You mean with just us? There's no way we could possibly cover all the Ida areas between just the few of us. This is an emergency. We will reach out and ask other players for help. That's pretty impressive, coming from someone as secretive as you. Haseo, I believe you had a relationship with those at Moon Tree. You should go and ask them for help. Yeah, antagonist. You think there's a chance that they would really <laughs> listen to me? Adelie's the one that has a relationship with Moon Tree, Yada. Myself. Then why do you need Haseo to go at all? Zelkova's the leader, dude. Yes, Master Why? Why are you both going to do the same thing? Adelie, you will stay here. If news of that arm were to spread beyond this group, it would only make things worse. Off to Moon Tree headquarters. Don't forget, the area words are Delta setting Eternity's night moon. I'll be back. Okay, I'll be waiting at the Chaos Gate. All right, I know this video is already pretty long, but bear with me. There is something I I need to say. So the whole thing about the Morgana factors and the Epitaph user PCs. The way Pi was just explaining it made it seem like CC Corp had created PCs with the Morgana Factor attached to them to use for whatever the hell they were trying to use. And I know that there was like a big fire in CC Corp and they lost a lot of the data, so I can kind of understand if they lost like the PC data. I could doesn't make sense, but I can roll with the fact that maybe that data is just, like, lost in the sea of old data, and that's why Yada was like, we salvaged it. What I don't really understand, though, is at the beginning of the game, and I mean volume one beginning of the game, we saw Haseo create his character, so I, I was always kind of under the impression that you know, if, if you randomly select a bunch of these different attributes and they line up just right, you happen to have that Morgana factor attached to you. But Pi makes it seem like it's on an existing character itself. So how did Haseo and everybody really get this? Because it makes it seem like they just found and started using pre-constructed characters already, and it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Trying to make sense of it is probably a mistake in the first place, but it's just, it's something that I'm just, like, want a little more clarity of, because it kind of seems super ridiculous just with the explanation that Pi gives. That, that's all I really wanted to say. Next time on Dahak GU, I, I guess we're going to Moon Tree to, to I don't know, start a fight, ask for help. We'll see. Bye bye, everybody.